The girl looked at the boy in front of her and slowly passed him the stick in her hand. The two held it at each end. This was the ruler, the insurmountable distance between them. Her name was Stella, she was a CF patient. There was no cure at present. She could only lie in the hospital for experimental treatment every day, but Stella was optimistic. She joked with the doctor every day, sharing her life on social platforms. Until one day, when Stella went to the nursery to watch the treatment, a boy got into her sight. His name was Will, he was also a CF patient. When he wanted to talk to Stella, the nurse came in, pulling them six feet apart. This was the distance that CF patients must stay away from each other to prevent cross-infection. However, Will didn't give up. I'm Will Newman. And you are? Death. Stella, thank you for putting your mask back on. Stella. You need to lighten up. It's just life. It'll be over before you know it. When Will returned to the ward, he turned on his laptop. At first, he looked at Stella's life records. He was deeply fascinated by the optimistic girl, but the doctor appeared for the first time, cutting off his ideas. Will was losing his hope of being cured. He walked up to the roof alone, sitting by the platform and looking at the world under him. And this scene was just seen by Stella downstairs. She went up to the roof and tried to dissuade Will, but Will wouldn't listen. Stella pretended to provoke him. If you don't care, then leave. Give your spot to someone else. Someone that wants it, that wants to live. Will stood up when he heard her saying that. Then he turned around. Stella was terrified, but it was just Will's trick. Stella was angry, but they were getting closer. She began to care about Will. She was willing to have in-depth communication with him. After careful consideration, they made an oath. As long as Will was willing to be treated, she agreed to let Will draw her. They shook hands. Funny. They started their treatment together, waking up every morning, going to bed at night. Will video called Stella, telling her to mix chocolate with lots of medicine. It wouldn't be difficult to take it all. The two chatted on their mobile phones even though they were just glass apart. They turned the inability to touch into a little fun of their own. Their life was very happy, but it was not enough. Whenever Will wanted to go further, Stella always refused. It turned out that a year ago, a tragedy came to her. Her favorite sister died unexpectedly. Until now, Stella still couldn't get out of the shadow. She didn't want to lose anyone else important in her life. However, Will didn't think so. When Stella was ready for surgery, he put on his full protective suit and went into the operating room, sitting in a chair six feet from the operating table, singing the song sung by her sister when she accompanied Stella, cheering her up. During Stella's operation, she looked up and saw the panting Will had placed. It was given to her by her sister. She felt like her sister was with her, chasing away the fear of the operating room. The operation was successful. The first thing Stella did after she woke up was leaving a message for Will. In the corner of her mouth was an undisguised smile. This time, however, it was Will's turn to flinch. He was outside the operating room, but he was caught by the nurse who took care of them. The nurse stuck to the six-foot rule and refused to compromise. She even showed him his inner wound to warn him. At that moment, all the happiness dissipated. Will finally realized their love was like a catalyst for death. However, Stella didn't know it. She stood in front of the mirror and dressed up carefully. She used her unopened cosmetics for many years, wanting to surprise Will, but she didn't expect that what she got was Will's rejection. He stood behind the door and said to the crazy knocker outside, just go. Stella calmed down, but she refused to give up. She could only think of a solution. Then she turned around and left. When she knocked on Will's door again, she had a billiard stick in her hand. Five feet apart. Will, are you in? I'm sorry. Atrium, nine o'clock. This was their first date. Stella handed Will the stick in her hand. The two clung to both ends of the stick. It was like they were holding each other. They sat by the pool talking about life. Looking at Stella laughing, Will couldn't extricate himself. I really want to touch you. Stella stared at Will, then she slowly grasped one end of the stick. Will also took the other end. Stella pulled the stick closer, raising the stick head and putting it on her shoulder, letting the stick head pass all over herself. It was like Will was touching her. The date was a success, but when they went back, they suddenly received bad news. Stella's best friend died. He died of this damn disease. Stella drove away Will, who came to comfort her. She cried frantically in the room. Then she made the craziest decision of her life. She asked Will out again, saying what was repressed in her heart. This whole time I've been living for my treatments instead of doing my treatments so that I can live. I want to live. They went to the ice lake together. This time, they had no scruples. They wanted to play freely on the ice lake, expressing themselves happily. I love you, Stella. I love you too. There was only one step last, but they finally couldn't go for it. Compared with being together, Will would prefer Stella to live. While they were sitting on the bridge, Will learned about Stella's new lung source. He was anxious that he would hold her back from getting it. Stella accidentally fell down the ice lake when she turned around. When Will was ready to go down and save her, Stella has fallen into the lake. Will rushed to the hole. 
he kept reaching out for Stella. Following the breathing tube, he finally saved her. However, she was out of breath. Not thinking much, Will began artificial respiration. After his constant attempts, he collapsed, almost tired. Stella finally spat out the water in her mouth. They were sent back to the hospital. The first thing Stella asked when she woke up was not the new lung but looking for Will. When she saw Will again, she was as happy as a child. Under Will's persuasion, Stella chose surgery to change her lung. The operation was successful. Stella had at least five more years to live, but Will was not so lucky. His life was coming to an end. Standing outside the door and looking at Stella sleeping, Will was going to do one last thing for her. When Stella woke up, the doctor handed her a tablet. It was Will's message. He hoped to fulfill Stella's wish at last. Then the nurse turned off the light. Will, who had been waiting outside for a long time, also saw it. He turned on the power immediately. Suddenly, there were bright lights outside. Will walked slowly from the light, calling Stella's name. You know, people are always saying if you love something you have to learn to let it go. That was such bullshit. So I want you to almost die. In that moment, Stella, nothing mattered to me. Except you. I want to go. All I want is to be with you. I want you to be safe. Then he walked away slowly in the light. Five feet, only two or three steps away, but that was the distance between them. He was a lover that she couldn't touch, not even if there was only a foot away. Why not? This foot gave them a clearer outline in their hearts. Five feet of the world, ten thousand feet of love. A foot close, a thousand feet deep. Good night to the world. May everyone cross the five feet of the earth in life to touch the one you love. The future is hard to know. Don't forget the way you come. Time will pass by, cherish the people you have in present.